Pause the music, folks. Pause the music. We, we always got to pause the music. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Place Like Omaha pod show. Today, we had another special guest, second interview of, of the show. And so far, they've been good. But we had Aaron Beck on the show today. He was a JUCO kid, ended up going to Illinois State in the Mo Valley, had some high honors to his name while he was at Illinois State. And Josh will list those off as soon as we get started with the show. But Boys, do we got anything before we before we roll right into this? Yeah, you may notice that I'm not at the middle <laughs> this time. I do, in fact, have my sunglasses on. I want to make a correction, and it's Shut not up, because I'm talking. it's not because Nick has unfactual information, but it was Indiana State, and I have misinformed oh, him. I will wear that oh, one. Indiana State that is yeah. on me. This is. I will wear that one. This is just like clockwork. Unfactual information. Unfactual. I will uh, wear that one. Nick had to had to had to wear it while he was saying it, but that no, that's excuse what, me. But at what point yeah. would this not be a Omaha show without some unfactual information hidden room. somewhere? No. Or pause the music. No. Or Mikey playing the victim. Always. Oof. Like always. You always. said because okay. I am attacked on a day. As day you will see, because nope. of my hair, color. ladies and gentlemen. You as shut you will your see mouth. In this episode, you will see that Mikey proceeds to choose violence at both of us, not at Aaron. Aaron <laughs> is a saint, and he was fine. Um, and Mikey loves him, but he hates both of us and proceeds to choose violence this entire time. So you will There's see, folks. There There's is reason. video first evidence. First, let me first let me defend myself. Let you defend yourself this. that you attacked us. <laughs> Zip your lip before Ex- I turn your mouth into a zipper. Ladies and gentlemen, exhibit A. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, please smack the shit out of Josh case. if you've ever seen him. Now, <laughs> let me defend myself. Oh my I gosh. was happily spacing off while you guys were asking him questions. So then, you two dickheads come around and go, Oh, Mikey's been awfully quiet. Why is that? Attacking me simply because of my hair color. There it is. Uh, no, there, it, there is. it is. Yes. So Victim. I did turn violent. Now, if we'll get back to why I'm wearing sunglasses, thank you very much. Mm. Because my Good future job. is incredibly bright, I need to oh, block out. Incredibly bright? Yes, bright. Yes. Blight. Blight. yes. Uh, yes. Do you know Blight. what that means, Mikey? Yes. To use blood. your word of the day toilet paper? I uh, No, I don't go to the bathroom. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, so I would beg to differ in that situation. Like, it's it's like Kim John. So violent to be an asshole. Oh, I will asterisk myself there. Right. Thank you. All right. Well, without further ado, we got the interview coming up with Aaron. So stay tuned for that. Today, we have a special guest with us. Um, his name is Aaron Beck. He is six a 6'6 six, six drink of water, tall drink of water. <laughs> um, our boy, we, we played together. Mike and I played with him on a, a summer ball team. Um, he first started out his career at only Central College. Um, he then proceeded to play at Indiana State for two years. He was re- rewarded in 2021, the Missouri Valley Conference Newcomer of the Year. He was a first team all conference choice. Um, he was awarded also uh, Player of the Week several times during that time. Um, he also played in the 2022 season and got a perfect game MVC baseball preseason all conference team. So, Aaron, so he is to the him. show. He, he, he is the gym. Okay. First question for you. Okay. You have less than eight dollars to spend in your mm. college days. What food place are you hitting first? Where are oh, you going? McDonald's. One hundred percent. McDonald's. All right. Yeah. Uh, the uh, All right. triple triple cheeseburger with a large fry, <laughs> large drink is just the way to go every time. Okay, that's a fair oh. choice. All right. Man triple knows cheese, huh? The triple. Yep. Always. Crucial question. Pickles or no pickles? There is no a right pickles. answer. Plain oh, okay. burger. Thank what? God. That, yeah. Plain that no a no pickles, man. baby. That's a no what is wrong with right all there. of you guys? Clap Get fucked, nerd. That's a real man right there. It's a real man. Get Unbelievable. Why do you guys, the heinous acts towards pickles? Because man? we are real men. That's why. I, I agree 100%. Unbelievable. Yeah. <clears throat> Fuck out of here. So <laughs> I'm already upset. So this is off to a terrible yeah, start. We don't right. you know how it goes. Would you quit choosing violence for one time? No. <laughs> <I> just <laughs> anyways. Um, 
But moving on, so um, can you talk briefly first about your time at uh, Only Central? Yeah, briefly. Um, so I guess the best way to sum up is probably best two years of my life. Um, mm-hmm. Juco, it's just, you know, it's a different creature. Um, I mean, it's all you got to work on your own to earn it. Um, everybody's trying to make it to the next level, which obviously everybody's goal is D1 level. Um, and so, I mean, you really got to put in the work. You're going to have coaches there to help you out, but they're not going to be there after practice necessarily unless you ask. So, I mean, I'd spent, I can't tell you how many hours I spent in the cage after practice just by myself off the tee. Um, even in the workout, we didn't have a plan to go through our workouts is kind of on your own. So, I mean, it's, it's honestly, if you ask me the realest grind in baseball. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> Anybody else to, to build off of that? Doing any questions? Um, I mean, met a lot of great dudes. I mean, and then the summer ball as well. I mean, that's a big thing that you got to introduce too, because you don't really do a whole lot of that traveling and then being on a team that you don't know anybody um, until you get to college. Uh, but I mean, no, I'd say that the relationship that you make with those guys is probably one of the strongest, I think, because uh, everybody goes through it the same. I mean, you're out there when it rains, you're throwing sand on the outfield. I mean, you're just doing the worst of the worst. The field, you get hand-me-down uniforms. I mean, it's just an ultimate grind and everybody's in it together. So, I mean, the relationship that you make with the guys is one that you keep forever, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Well, this, I guess, is kind of a segue between, you know, D1 and Juca, but uh what's what's the difference or like the biggest difference between you know the two i get divisions um without saying like the amount of money i guess is put, that is put into each program yeah um so i'd say school wise i mean it's a definitely different type of schooling that you're going to get juco is going to be was way easier i mean i could just breeze through class and then once i got to isu i had a big wake-up call my first semester uh, that was really tough um but I'd say the biggest different ba- difference baseball wise is probably, um, like I said before, the grind. I mean, yeah, at the D1 level, you're practicing five, six hours a day, but it's as a team. So you're always going to have a coach there to help you at JUCO. I mean, our practices sometimes are just BP. So it's like if you want to get better, I mean, you need to ask your coach. You have to take the first initiative. You're always having to work on your own. Um, there's not really anybody there to push you more than you have to push yourself. So then weird question here for you. Um, would you rather take the JUCO baseball schedule and mix it with the Indiana State academics, or would you rather do the Indiana State academics and mix it with the JUCO baseball? I guess it's the same question. Just you said first, the same but, thing. Yeah, piss you off. Said, yeah. Piss off, bitch. <laughs> piss off. Let me ask it my way, okay? Didn't ask your opinion. Hit the showers, buddy. Reset. You're not, Eric. <laughs> Stop talking. Um. That's a good question. I've never thought about that. Uh, definitely, oh, I would take the JUCO uh, school and the baseball from ISU because, I mean, I wouldn't be the same player I was without ISU. Um, I really transformed as a player there because you're with the coaches all the time for five, six hours a day. They're making sure that you're doing it right. They are getting better every day. I mean, the biggest thing our, thing our coach told us was 1% every day. So I'm not a big school guy either, so I couldn't really care about the education as much. Um, yes. But, I mean, I think it agrees it agree no matter where you get it from, really. <laughs> yes. Preach. X. We so, hate EVU here, Aaron. Yeah. Just to, <laughs> well, I guess kind of like going off that, because you had to do – you said everything was kind of on your own on the JUCO route. You had everything kind of go in, um, do it yourself. Recruiting-wise, like to get – to get to the next level, how, how was the recruiting process for you? Cause I mean, if you have to do everything by yourself on the field or off the field, were they able to help you out coaching what, like were coaches able to help you with recruiting or did you have to do that entirely on your own as well? Um, so that's one thing I was really thankful for it. Only our uh, head coach had been doing it for, I mean, 30 plus years. So he had connections from all over. So he really, his, his main goal, he could care less about winning and losing his goal is to get you better. Um, even if that means that you had to work on your own and he wasn't with you as much, but then to make mm-hmm. you move on to the next level, whether that be NAIA, D3, D1, D2, it doesn't really matter. He just wanted you to be able to continue playing and move on. So I was really so thankful awesome. for that because he he helped a lot with that. Um, but I would say in general, it's usually going to be the coaches that are going to help. So in the fall, you go to showcases like up in uh, Grand Park in Indianapolis is a big one that you go to where you just play other teams and then a bunch of scouts can come and watch you play. Um for me, I guess it was a little different because I had schools that wanted me, but for ISU, I never actually talked to the ISU baseball coaches. Um, Dennis Conley, who is our JUCO coach, he's like best friends with Mitch Hannis, who's the ISU coach. Um, and so I guess there was something behind the scenes going on there. And so 
I just got a call out of the day saying, hey, we want you to come visit. That was about it. So yeah, I guess it was a little different for me than other people. Hmm. Solid. So was – um, sorry, Nick, do, do you have something else to say? I was just going to say that's always interesting because I just never – you don't hear a lot of, about the recruiting talks just because it's like when you're kind of on – the way to get to college it's like you mostly have to reach out to yourself like your coaches will mm -hmm. talk to everybody at the same time but it's like you're kind of doing your own recruiting and i think that was the biggest thing that i learned and like especially my parents since it was the first time that we ever done this now I, mm -hmm. I don't know about all the rest of you but it was just like it was hard because you would still have showcases to go to but if you didn't have the money to go there it was like they would keep inviting you and like there would be coaches that would want to have you come see this well was it to to get you there to recruit or was it to get you there to like see the money from that aspect as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just understanding the JUCO recruiting route, I think is a big thing for people to get. So thank you on that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's definitely different than high school. Um, high school, you're right. You got, I mean, you got to do it on your own people coach. You're getting emails from coaches saying, Hey, come spend $200 to come to this showcase. And they might not be like, yeah. that interested in you. So it's like, it's totally different, but um, no JUCO, I would hope for the most part is their job is to get you from playing two years or one year at that JUCO and then move on to the next level. Um, so the fall at every JUCO that I know, if you go to at least four or five showcases, or you can showcase your talents to scouts. Damn. Nick, Nick touched on the recruiting process from JUCO to, you know, ISU. What's it, what was it like from high school to JUCO? Um, it's definitely, at least from what I heard from guys that I've played with and everything, it's a lot different than going from like high school to a D1 program. Um, I mean, you go from high school, which I had, 300 people in my graduating class to JUCO where I had 300 people in the school. So it's a, it's a big difference. Um, once you, once you get there, I'd say it's a little bit easier to get into college. I'm glad that I did it because I don't know if I would have been able to handle the big jump from 300 kids in my class to then 3000, 5,000 in the school, you know what I mean? Um, mm, and bigger yeah. class sizes. So school wise, it made it a lot easier for me. Um, baseball wise. Um, it, it was definitely a wake up call because I mean, in high school, I guess I didn't really work as hard as I should have necessarily. Um, and then you get to JUCO and it's like, wow, okay, I got to work my butt off if I want to make it kind of thing. So, yeah, I was going to ask if that was, answered your question at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to ask, like, so was the dream always just like a D1 or was there a specific school, um, whether that be in your high school, like when you were graduating, you're like, I want to go here, or after going through like your JUCO, was there a school that was like, this is the dream school. Um, I mean, my dad's from North Carolina. I've always wanted to go to UNC. That was my dream school growing up. Um, but no, my freshman year of high school, I kind of set a goal to go. I wanted to go D1. Um, and so I wasn't going to be able to out of high school. So I'm really glad I went JUCO to be able to achieve that dream. Um, but no, there wasn't necessarily a school in mind besides UNC. But out of high school, I knew I was going to get that. So I was just trying to set a goal in my freshman sophomore year going D1. So I worked mm -hmm. with that. And it took me an extra two years, my first two years of college, but eventually, you know, I achieved it. Mm -hmm. thankfully, so there you go. Was there uh you're not playing anymore, are you? Um, no, right now, right now. I just graduated uh, this year okay. in uh, May. And so that was my last college year. And now I'm just waiting until tryouts uh, in March, okay. April for indie ball. So I'm gonna That's what that. I was going to ask. Was, ask. was there any looks okay. or anything? Did you, did you talk to any, you know, MLB teams at all? Uh, my junior year or last year, uh, not the one that just ended, but the year before, uh, I had a couple teams reach out to me and wanted me. I had a really good year that year, um, but this year I just I suffered some injuries in my ankle, and then I was sick against a couple of series. I didn't really perform as I needed to do to get that opportunity again. Mm. Um, so now I'm just going to try to go indie and then try to make it that way. The grind, but the goal is yeah. still yeah, the majors at grind. some point. Yeah. You know what? The goal is still majors at some point. Yeah, that I mean, yes, that's the dream. Yep. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Love that. So but, also I mean, kind of. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Yeah, no, Nick, shut up. Yeah, <laughs> get out of here oh, with I'm that factual information. <laughs> I was just gonna say. I mean, if I don't make it pro, I mean, it's ridiculously hard. So if I don't make it to that MLB mm -hmm. standard, I'm just gonna be happy that you know, pro ball. I just don't want to stop playing and knowing that I could probably do more. So gonna go as long as I can. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Nick, we got to clip that. We got to clip that and put that. <laughs> uh, That's no. a good quote. Um, I think one of the other bigger questions that I had too. So like you went from, it kind of breaks down on two standpoints. So you had the competition at the JUCO level and then obviously going division one, there is a higher caliber of competitions, but in, in some places across the country, the JUCO competition is so damn stiff 
Mm-hmm. And it's just, it, it's crazy. So you got guys that are throwing 95 plus out of control. You got guys that are throwing 95 with precision. You guys got just absolute filth down there with off-speed pitches and everything like that and competition yep. hitting wise. So if you could break it down from a standpoint of how the competition in college from JUCO differed from the competition in college at a division one level. And if there were any major similarities or if it was totally different kind of going into your first couple of years. Yeah. Um, so JUCO, you're going to get more of, there are going to be a lot of good players. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard of Wabash Valley. Um, they were in our conference. They make the world series almost every year. It's like, um, so when you get teams like that, um, you're going to have guys. I remember my sophomore year, there was a lefty thrown 97. No got drafted second round so it's like you're gonna have a couple of those guys depending on who you play and I guess your conference as well but the majority of the guys are gonna be I would say the majority that you play in Juco are gonna be mid D1 to lower um you're gonna get a couple guys that are gonna go big power five schools um but once you get up to I guess the D1 level it's the average player is a lot better so the average player is gonna be where they should be you know what I mean so Juco you're gonna have a mix of guys like some are gonna go D3 some are gonna go power five one or two, and then a couple are going to go mid, like mid D1 schools, um, like ISU. So it kind of just depends on who you play, I guess, at Juco. Um, and then you're just going to have more variety of talent is the best word I could say. Um, but once again, at the D1 level, I mean, everybody's average. The average player is where they should, where they belong most of the time. So and so it's a, it's a big difference because the teams, the players that you play at D1, they are, for the most part, going to be better than your Juco players kind of thing, if that makes sense. Like the, it does, yep. the level of talent steps up a notch. Fair enough. Um, so a few weeks ago, we interviewed um, Alan Amati. Do you remember Alan? Yeah. Um, yeah. So he talked, we talked to him briefly about um, what was important to him, especially when choosing a college. Mm-hmm. Um, his big thing was a lot of um, family and he wanted to live around Fresno and, and stay there and, and be consistent with those guys so did that play a role in the college that you chose um Um, around the area and stuff like that um for me in particular not necessarily Mm -hmm. um I've never been a big homebody so I could I'd be fine with going 13 14 hours away from home if that means like you play baseball um Mm -hmm. but I guess for me the biggest thing would be what feels like home so like when you step Mm -hmm. on that campus you Mm -hmm. step on that baseball field on your visit what feels like home what feels like okay I can see myself playing here for three, four, five, however long you're there um, and not get tired of it kind of thing. Um, and then it's also, I mean, if you're getting scholarship, that also plays a part. I mean, you're going to want to go somewhere that they're offering you scholarship. You're going to mm-hmm. want to go there more than likely because that means, hey, we want you. We want you to play. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going somewhere that, that you don't have to get scholarship. But if you go into it knowing like, hey, I probably not going to play here like these dudes up some studs or something like I'm not on that level yet then I would probably recommend a different route. Um, But I mean, even at ISU, we had guys that weren't, weren't going to play for the first two years and then they had to work their butt off and earn their spot. Um, So it's kind of, it's kind of whatever you feel like, but I would say the biggest thing for me at least was what felt like home, what felt comfortable when I got on campus, got in the weight room, got in the field, what felt like home and I could just go out and perform and I didn't feel nervous or anxious or anything like that or feel like I didn't belong. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, we have some, um, like younger listeners that are still going like the recruitment route and all that kind of stuff. So is that kind of the message that the big sellout that you would have is like, go where it feels like home, or is there any other advice that you would give to anybody Um, coming into college? Yeah, I would say that's probably one of the biggest ones. Um, also it depends. Like if you're going straight from high school to D one, it's going to be a different I guess a different advice than if you're going D1 to JUCO, because if you're going, I mean, high school to JUCO, excuse me, because if you're going to JUCO out of high school, then it's going to be like, not necessarily what feels like home, but maybe, okay, can this place get me where I want to go after two years? Of being? Can this place improve me enough to where I'm going to be where I want to be in two years that I can make it to that next level, whatever that is. Um, but if you're going to, to a place that you're going to be your permanent home for the next four or five years, I would definitely recommend going somewhere that you feel comfortable, that you like the coaches a lot, they're like, okay, these guys are going to work my butt off. And then after four years or maybe even three, I can get drafted or I can do this or go play indie ball kind of thing, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So also kind of going along with that, I guess the aspect of um, when you were kind of going in through that whole aspect of it feeling like home, you, you had to work 
outside on your own at all times, being, being that guy, like being your own personal coach and like not trying to talk on dog on the team or dog on the program or anything, but was there a downfall that you had kind of going the Juco route? Was there anything like you said that, that Juco itself could improve on or any, any aspects Um, of that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, at least for me, I know it's changed. I mean, it's been three years since I've played Juco ball. Um, but I don't know, for me, we didn't have a workout program. So uh, I think the biggest thing for me is that that's what I needed. I needed to hit the weights hard because I needed to grow into my body a six, six frame. I mean, I couldn't be skinny my whole life. So <laughs> I needed to grow into that frame. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing for me is just, I wish we would have had a, a workout program. So those first two years, I didn't work out like I should have. Um, and I think that really ended up hurting me in the end. Cause once I, I feel like I could have gone maybe somewhere a little bit better, but I didn't have the, I didn't have the build for it necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I think there's always going to be a downfall when at least a little bit, when you have to work yourself and you don't have somebody there to watch you all the time, making sure that you're doing it right. Cause it's going to be a lot of learning of yourself and learning, Hey, this is my swing or this is how I like to hit the ball. And then trying to make that work with how you're playing kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say defensively, we were always working on that at Juco. Um, there wasn't a, much of a downfall there. I, I got a lot better when I got to ISU because they took more time with it, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. But I would say the biggest thing as a position player was your swing. Always like is you have the three hour practice time window where you're going to hit a little bit and then you're going to field. But then outside of that, it's like, OK, so this is what we worked on today. What do I need to keep working on this for? And like so if I'm trying to hit this inside pitch and I'm getting my arms out around it, what do I need to do to fix this? Making my hands tight kind of thing. So it was a lot of teaching yourself and that I think that helps you a lot as a player because then you don't always need someone to show you you know what I mean Um, but obviously when you have to teach yourself there's going to be a lot of error and a lot of mistakes Um, so just the biggest thing when they when it comes to that you're making a mistake or you're making or you're messing up not playing how you want to knowing how to fix it and uh, really just trusting yourself and trusting the process sweet Mikey's been awful quiet now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Talks all his going. smack. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. All right. Do we have uh, any more questions? Yeah. Kick this dude Nick off the fucking podcast. That's not a question. <laughs> That's, not That's a just question. a comment. That Can we up. kick this dude Nick off the podcast? <laughs> oh, there it is. Um. Probably not. I think it's locked or in at this fuck point. You too, then. All right. <laughs> Mikey did choose violence tonight. Well, if that's all we got. Every uh, day. Well, Aaron, I didn't tell you, got... you just came for me. No, I have a question. Can I speak to our no. guest, please? <laughs> you, no, you, no I have one question time for our guest. Okay, then do it. So, <laughs> royally, it. fuck off. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Since oh, I have been God. rudely cut out of this, I have a question for you. Let's hear it. If you could do anything <laughs> over again, what would you do? And uh, over which stretch of time? Like in high school, Juco, or when you were at ISU? Man, I, I had a really good feeling that question was coming. I tried to yeah, think about it. It's coming. See, Loaded I think the biggest, thing, the biggest thing you have to think about, whether you're in high school, junior college, I mean, do you want whatever level you're at, um, is giving it your all so that you don't have any regrets. Um, I wouldn't say I necessarily have any regrets, but if I could go back and do it over, I probably would have worked a lot harder in high school. Um, I just feel like I've started too late to start to work hard and really realize like, man, like there's a lot of talent out there and there's a lot of good ball players. Um, I probably should have started a little bit sooner when I started taking it as serious as I, as I do now. Um, but I would say that's about it. Um, I feel like I worked my butt off in Juco, um, had to earn a spot my freshman year, earned it. Um, and then sophomore year, obviously you're trying to make it that, that next level. I achieved my goal of that. Uh, and then I don't really have any regrets about how hard I worked or anything at, Indiana State um so I'd probably say the only thing is really just high school just starting to work to realize how much harder it is to make it in this game at a younger age and starting to work a lot harder especially with kids nowadays it's like dude seniors are 6'6 250 hitting bombs it's like wow that's insane so mm-hmm. especially with the kids nowadays I definitely think that me I wish I would have started a little bit younger working as hard and taking it as serious as I do I have another question since the dickheads a part of this uh, podcast want to come from my neck. What is the <laughs> go-to place that, to eat when you're at Indiana State? Mm, at Indiana State? And you can't say McDonald's. That is true. <laughs> you cannot. That you you two, shut your mouth. <laughs> snag too. Um, oh, I would probably say 
man, I ate Panda Express a lot at Indiana State, like probably more than I should have really. Um, <laughs> but I mean, we, we were so busy that like we didn't really have time and we, we, we would go from class to practice, you know, class to early hitting for an hour, then to practice for four hours. Then we'd have weights right after practice. Then we'd have study tables at seven and nine. So it was like really the go-to meal was anything that I could get my hands on quick. So, I mean, that's why I said McDonald's earlier. I mean, I would have that at least four times a week for dinner. I mean, it was so crazy. got the Ocho Cinco diet. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> right hey, I mean, it worked for me. I ain't got diabetes yet or anything. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Were you a gamer? No. Um, oh, I actually, oh, I never Christ. grew up a gamer. Never had that stuff when I was younger. I'm thankful for it because I would have spent way too much time that I didn't have to do that. Um, so I just used that time that I would have spent gaming just working on my craft. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, but I did do it every now and then, it, you know, man. when I had some free time. I did it. But nothing. This man's smart. He's thinking ahead. He's like, if any of these scouts come in and watch this podcast. <laughs> right. They'll know what's sure up. They'll right know in. I'm dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Smart man. Oh, man. Business man. Business man. Absolutely. Business yeah. man. Would you expect Take anything notes, less though? Yeah, shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Damn. All right, Aaron, do you have any questions for us? No, um, I don't think so. How long have you guys been doing this? We started uh earlier this year at the beginning of uh the baseball season. We did it week okay. to week then, and um been staying strong ever since. We're about what is this, 27 episodes now? Wow. Yeah, this should be Eight. should be 27 on the good old on the show now. So yeah, Dude, we started remember. officially back in pulling up the videos here on the good old YouTube. Oh, God, we started about seven months ago. Josh, can wow. you confirm this? We started seven months ago. We've been <sighs> rocking through it. I mean, good if he pulled up the YouTube, awesome. I've I've run the YouTube. So that's awesome. You do not run the YouTube. I run the YouTube. It's on my, <laughs> but it's on my Put channel. Put the tape measures so, away. Right, Nobody cares. It's on my. T- <laughs> Have you guys uh, had you guys had a lot of good people come on all different kinds of levels and everything? Um, we, we are you are actually our second guest on the podcast. Yeah. So our first guest was Alan, oh. um, okay. and we've been trying to just kind of um, get around, get a bunch of different guys that have played at different D ones. Um, we were welcoming anybody that's that's D one baseball or softball or anything like that, just to kind of talk about their experiences. Okay, all that kind of stuff. So that's awesome. Good idea. And then you yeah. said you have a lot of young listeners, right? Oh, uh, we do. Uh, we have a few. Um, what do we have? Like 17 subscribers right now, but 19. Um, 19 oh! now. Yeah. Hey. Jumping up. Well, hey, okay, so, it's always going to start low to get high. It's true. Right? Well, and I was talking to Kron, the guy that helps like produce our show on Spotify. Shout out we Kron were, Media. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Kron. But we were Next, sitting there and we were shut taking the a look up, at it. Josh. Oh, my Lord. Mikey is <laughs> on one. But we were sitting there looking at the stats, and we had, like, nine downloads from good old India, like, all the way across the ocean. And I was like, Holy how crap. the hell does anybody <laughs> from India hear this show on either Spotify Just start or talking about cricket. Just plug <laughs> cricket. Just <laughs> plug cricket. Plug cricket. But, yeah, no, Perfect. so the audience, the audience is growing. Like, it, it has been fun, and, like, it has been a little bit more tough at times. And we've been hitting on the last couple of episodes just, like, what is – um. Like last week, we talked about just kind of everything um, going mainly from like a standpoint of like builds going into college and builds going into the pros. We've talked about just school as an aspect. Like uh, last week was mainly like the road to fall ball. Like how was uh, fall at our levels different from what we expected coming in and everything Mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, we, we have been able to break down a lot of stuff and it was fun, especially during the season when we were actually like, trying to make predictions during the the college world series some people right better than a lot of others <laughs> undefeated in the first round so you can yeah that was Ooh, okay. shocking. i see but, you okay yeah so i mean we awesome. kind of we like to keep it different so yeah those are good topics those yeah. are yeah and well, obviously we have no filter right uh, <laughs> my filter, filter is gone when we were we starting have. out he was like do i have to censor myself and i'm like no he's like what's a filter Exactly. exactly it makes it more fun oh it makes gosh. it more enjoyable yeah Tracy, I shut up nick i'm mikey, not saying where's your, shit. Uh, where's your face mikey i miss it's it hiding from me <laughs> you gotta it's tune in the podcast baby oh, oh. My gosh. Oh, well, red hair awesome. still there don't fret <laughs> we did not dye it 
I still am red, you know, in the face, the beard, the hair. You can kind of see the hair. I got a little the bit of skin. alfalfa popping. No, my skin's white. Thank you very much, dickhead. Yeah, it's hey, not, so I'm it's just hearing that you're still time. your same cute self, huh? There it oh, is. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. There we go. Kiss me through the phone, baby. Come on. Kiss me through the phone. <laughs> oh, All right, well, God. Aaron, we appreciate you stopping by and spend some time talking with us. Um, Again, if, if the season rolls around, you want to jump on, make some predictions with us, you're welcome to it, my man. Of course, dude. Hey, anytime you let me know, I'm down. I love right, that, man. We will. Well, yeah, we thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me, guys. Kiss me through the phone, baby. <laughs> I'm not putting my sunglasses on for this. Okay. And I'm playing it's the fine. victim again. It's fine. All right. I'm playing <clears throat> the victim again. <laughs> it's fine. All right. I'm Three. so good at this. I might as well start, not stop, right? Please leave yep. this in there to say that he is playing the victim and he's doing it. <laughs> if, you, if you leave this in there, so help me God. So help me God. I will burn well, this fucking podcast to the ground. With your and hair? there's another F-bomb. I'll sabotage so, it. I will sa- it wouldn't, right it wouldn't, video. It, it, it is on video. Oh, we I got it right here. Recording. Bro, well, have you? Okay. No place like Omaha after dark. Yeah, put us on the home on pod after dark. <laughs> but we want to thank Aaron for joining us. It was oh, a fun I'm interview. It's not recorded. Do I need to start? No, you you're fine. I'll take a screenshot again. Oh, screenshot. My Lord. Absolutely. Well, fuck it at this point. Whatever. <laughs> but no, we thank Aaron for joining us. It was a great conversation. Got a lot of insight on the JUCO route going from there, going into D1 ball and just kind of the the whole dive into JUCO because like we talked about it multiple times of just like how how kids can go from the juco to the d1 route but it was actually nice to kind of get some of that insight because i mean i think a lot of people kind of underestimate what the juco route really is and how like much of a challenge that it can be and i mean aaron kind of corrected us on that and just said yeah they basically got to do everything kind of on their own which is actually insane but at the same time it's like you go there for go there for your sport and try to push out what you can so I, I don't know if I think people think that, you know, the Juker is definitely harder than mm-hmm. I think more people think. Like I know people think it's hard. They know it's hard. It's not the easiest thing in the world. But I think oh, yeah. you touched you asked a great question about what the recruiting process was like from Juco to the next level. And that's mm-hmm. not something that really gets talked about a lot. Um and yeah, yeah I, I mean, yeah. I think he he brought some very valid <laughs> some points. Funny chuckles. Question. <laughs> oh! still violent um but i i do pull agree. today i do agree that he he had some very good insight and um i especially like um how he shared like it's it's where you feel at home is mm. where you really are going to shine the brightest and, and be the best version of yourself um i think that that holds true at a lot of colleges um where it's if you fall in love with the baseball aspects but don't see yourself at the college, then it's really difficult versus if you fall in love yeah. with the college aspects, um, then it's, it's okay. So you have other things to um, rely on and enjoy while you're there. Well, and I think at like the Juco level too, like when he touched on the fact that you still have to make it feel like home, it's like for me personally, like I, at, at a Juco college with that, I, I don't know how much like the home aspect would be there on some mm. levels, just because it's like, there's so much turnover. Two- there's oh, so much yeah, turnover. It's, yeah. It's like a two, it's a two year school. You're, and he even said it like classes were kind of a breeze. And I mean, it's just like, it, it's kind of that idea of you're just sp- basically there to work and it's like, get better at your craft, which is, which is nice because you always need to focus on that. But at the same time, it's like, I felt more secure at going. And this is, this is different from all aspects. I felt more secure going to a four year straight out just because I did find the right fit early at BV and I found the, the right type of coaching because uh, Joe Paletta from back in Omaha. He was there. Um, he recruited me through the fall ball team that I was on, and it felt like kind of that co- good competitive atmosphere that I wanted to be at. And all the guys seemed to be just um, enjoying you wherever you were at. So, I mean, it's like it is different from if you aren't like Aaron said, he wasn't a homebody, so he could travel 14 hours to play ball. I was a little bit more of a homebody, but still I was I wanted to travel. I kind of wanted to get away. And it was like I got away trying to go three hours up to, to Bancroft during COVID summer and playing ball there on every Sunday. So I was doing what I could to, to try to get better at my point, but it, it's to his their own, I guess, is what they say. So I think I think the difference, though, is that some people go to the Juker route because that is their only option. That is yeah, true. Like, like you that said, is true. Like you said, you chose the four-year because like, you felt comfortable there. And I, like that's why I chose my school. But some people just, they, one, might not have the academics to go to a four-year yet, so they have mm-hmm. to go that Juco to get those up. 
some people, you know, might not want to pay that financial burden right mm-hmm. off the bat. Yep. So they'll oh, go yeah. the Juco route. It's just, and the, and then the other reason could just be maybe they're they just weren't the greatest athlete at their school, and they just didn't have the greatest academics. So they're going to go here, you know, to up both and then go four year. Mm-hmm. And some people have a reverse where they'll go, you know, they'll start at the four year, not like it, go to the Juco and then go back. Yeah. Every like every story is different. It's no, like it's nice that we've had Aaron, um and Alan on here and they've told us like their stories Mm -hmm. just because they've done it their way. Doesn't mean that's the correct way. Like everybody has their own path that, you know, that they have to travel. Um, and what that is, is, is entirely unknown unless it's like only, you know, what your own path is in a way. Yeah. Um, and you've got your own goals and stuff that you want to get done. So just because Alan, you know, went D one right out of high school, and Aaron went the JUCO route and Nick went the D3 route and JD and I went the NAI route. Like that does not mean that what we picked is the only way to go. Yeah. That fantastic point. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> but if we don't have anything else to add on the night, we thank you guys all for joining us and we hope you guys are enjoying the series. Still, we're trying to do the best that we can in the off season to bring you guys some good information or at least some good opinion points. We've got a couple of interviews still looking kind of on the back burner, trying to get those um, into talk tos. We're still trying to reach out to Flintstone gummies. I'm still trying to figure Sponsor out what the us, Flintstone gummies. Yeah. Unbelievable, I'm, bro. At this rate, you guys as well see if Campbell's soup can sponsor us. Campbell's soup. Oh boy, we're yeah, bro, he's, this he's on a Google spicy ad up now. In here. I'm getting upset. <laughs> Is Campbell's chunky man up here? But no, we got some we got some interviews still on the back burner that we're trying to reach out to. We we're looking to try to get some sponsorships off the ground as well. Just trying to talk through, test the waters a little bit. I'm also gonna I mentioned this other this other little tidbit during the interview or after that, but we've got nine nine downloads from good old India all the way across the pond. So we're gonna shout out to you guys. We're so gonna speaking of India, speaking oh, of no. India, I what saw we got now? a tweet, bro. It was a cricket play. This shit was dope as hell. I didn't know this. I know nothing about cricket. Disclaimer. Um, but this person Disclaimer. went to like, th- I don't know if it's called, I think it's called pitching. They were going to pitch it, right? Bowling. Yeah, sure. yeah. Bowling. Yeah. 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 Bowling. Um, and the person who was going to run back to where the ball, like the ball is being thrown had left the line early. Mm-hmm. So the Indian bird, like, wait, they hit the wickets. Is that the, is that the proper, uh, is Indian I... the proper? Yes. Yes. It is Indian because okay. they're um, from India. Listen, I don't know. I'm not trying We're to start get a riot, bro. Now. We're I'm trying canceled. to be correct. No. So I appreciate the, the time Indian, and effort you're putting into it. Yeah, we, we do. Stopped and just tagged like the plank. I don't know what this is called. Get the wickets. And it yep. out. Yeah. I was like, damn. Yeah, it's so like weird. That, they got bro. like, I remember. Okay. So like, I remember just a little plug. I remember watching Lagan in sports and societies in college. It's a like mm-hmm. four hour movie about cricket crazy long right on. and like so if you have like two people you have like the the bad like the person that's batting or whatever it's called like hitting yeah the, yeah hitting it and then you have another person on the other side and they can continuously hit and like go back and forth until they get out so like they could have like 10 like at bats if that makes sense like converting yeah. it into baseball talk they could be swinging for so long and sometimes they can hit it if it doesn't hit the wickets and not leave the box if they don't feel like That's they can insane. make it it's so this, crazy it's so this crazy. is weird to me you said it's uh i don't know how long a cricket game is it's long dude those games but go for a hot minute is it just because of america how impatient we are like Yes. I never hear Jack Diddley shit about a cricket game. Well, because so many people think about this. So many people will sit down and watch a 90 minute soccer match and there could not be a winner. They would sit and watch the entire thing and be like, that was a good match. So I, I watch have, football now I, and they have an overtime and they're like, this is upsetting. And then when they end in a yeah. tie, they're like, this is That's terrible. That's got to be an America thing then. Yeah, it, is. it has to be. We're just okay, being so, privileged little pre- people. Yes, we are impatient. Right on. Right on. I mean, yeah, America, I, I and we want it now. Bit, I was going to say, we're a little bit My lucky. My money, so. JG. Get a sponsor. <laughs> get a sponsor. <laughs> it's but, my okay. money. It's my sponsorship, and I need it now. <laughs> so I looked this up. I, I typed in in Google the average 
like length of a cricket game. It oh. says the test matches are usually what? played over five days. What's a test or, match? I don't know, dude. Oh! I'm just I'm I forgot about that. Yeah, they play like like they could like stop a game and then resume it the next day. Yeah, they play five. <sighs> it's My typically gosh. played over five days. Four innings is normally played in a test match, uh, where each team bats and bowls at least twice, and then each each day's play is typically six hours, and at least ninety overs bowled. I have no idea cricket terminology, so I apologize to our viewers over there that are like. You guys don't know what the hell you're talking about. We're trying to learn on this, I guess. But yeah, we'll, so, we'll next episode we will we'll do some studying over this break this down break cricket, and <laughs> study cricket, and talk oh, about might it. Might as well. Yeah, no shit. That's kind Dang, of fun. But like, I want to learn. What come at me for you? No profanity word, un- explicit word, unbelievable. But, Language. Yep. But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We thank Aaron for being on as well. If you guys have already found the page, we are the No Place Like Omaha pod on YouTube. You can look us up, No Place Like Omaha. And then also you can see us on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. We're working on getting a couple more videos up or a couple more episodes up for that as well. And then also you can find us on TikTok and Twitter at the Omaha pod. So, shout out Cronio Media. Shout, shout out, out Cronio Media as gummies, well. And Flintstone. Because Nick's dropping the ball. Um, I guess now drop a uh, uh, shout out Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup. Um, and shout out Sharpie, bro. They got these dope ass pens. Huge fan. Godspeed, Spider Man. Mikey just likes to to hit the end of the episode He's with anything the that's in his room. Bro, yeah, I'll plug plugs. in our sponsors. There we go. But. No, thank you guys for joining us. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Tune in back in about a week and a half or so when we get either somebody else on the pod or we break down. And comment below on either in the comment section on YouTube or on TikTok or on Twitter for what you guys want us to talk about next. So without further ado, I'm Nick. We got JD over there. And then we got the Dr. Love. And we will see you guys later.